Right, a new survey published today has highlighted the struggles that disabled away supporters have when following their clubs in Europe. It was conducted by Level Playing Field, whose chief executive, Owain Davis, is with me now. Good to see you, Owain. Look, just run us through the survey and some of the key findings then. Yeah, so the survey it kind of conducted off the back, really, of fans coming to us and clubs talking about their kind of experiences in Europe. And mm. that prompted the survey about being able to get the real-life pictures. And we firmly believe in that decisions for disabled people made by disabled people and and the survey was really well supported as a part of that and as you you know about, about the findings themselves we had 53 percent of, of the fans engaged in the survey outlined that the levels of accessibility were below adequate um, when attending live sport and then we also had 79 percent of wheelchair users who attended away fixtures in Europe highlighted that they were located or sat with home fans so they weren't with their fellow away fans which obviously poses a significant issue from safety but also yeah. that match the experience as well so there's some real some real kind of interesting figures uh, within the survey which paint a pretty bleak picture would you say that the, the, the survey findings were concerning? Is that what you found? Yes, well, I think from, from in 2024, when we're working with, you know, the, the clubs in particular involved in the, you know, the Champions League and Europa League, the richest clubs in, you know, in the world, it, it is concerning that at that level that we're seeing these standards of match they experience for fans. And we want to see the fan experience prioritised, but disabled fan experience, importantly so, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a right, it's a human right, being able to go to the game, Absolutely. being able to watch the game, being able to kind of toilet appropriately as well. And those supporting facilities, which sometimes go missing, really kind of detract from the match they experience, but also it's an attack on a human right as well. So we need to really prioritise these. Look, only 43% of fans, this is what I was reading in this, you surveyed, had been to an away European game. So what reasons did they give for not attending then? Well, I think this is quite, it's quite you know, common kind of statistics around this, but first and foremost is the inaccessibility of venues. So that, that's kind of there. We need that infrastructure in place to be able to kind of make it as easy as possible. There's anxieties that kind of around that, but then there's also the elements of cost as well, which mm -hmm. obviously travelling abroad, perhaps, you know, the, 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 we, you know, we had our annual fan survey with the cost of attending life sport for disabled fan on average is £111 more expensive for disabled people. And that obviously kind of is, is, it makes it more difficult for people to attend as Why well. Why is it more expensive? What are they having to incur? So then? if you're Just looking at the, the disability-related costs, so sometimes if you're travelling abroad as well, you have to pay for your extra personal assistant. If you're a wheelchair user, so you have to pay for two tickets to have that additional support. If you think public transport is not always accessible yeah. and kind of going there, so then you might have to rely on taxis instead of being able to make use of the public transport. You may not be able to walk that far, so again, that additional cost of being able to get the public transport is, is another issue. Issue as well. Where does this lie? So, is this a UEFA issue or is this the clubs themselves, like the stadiums themselves? It's, it's fundamentally both. If you look okay. at it from a club perspective, the club need to be need to be reflective of the communities they serve. So, they need to understand their fan base. If you look yeah. in the UK, 25% of the population have a disability. So, we need to ensure that's reflected yeah. within the stands as well, and that that, that, that service and provision is yeah. delivered. But UEFA need to lead this. There needs to be that leadership from the from UEFA and about ensuring that that the levels of access and inclusion are monitored, that their standards are in place and that their expectations that if they don't deliver against it, there are actions of repercussions towards that as well. How does this compare to the UK then, these findings? So the findings on, in our survey, they are they are worse from, from that perspective. The away fan experience generally is a worse experience than home fans, just kind of whether it's kind of there. But the levels compared to our annual fan survey, where we had 16, 1,600 responses, compared to what we have in the European one, they are worse than when we're kind of looking at going to Europe up as well. Okay, so what are the biggest things that clubs and UEFA need to do then, would you say? What's the, what's the priority here? Yeah, so I think first and foremost is that proactive engagement, engaging with disabled fans, reaching out, speaking to fans about their experiences. That's really important to be able to kind of capture that. We also then need to ensure that we have that finances allocated. We've identified that the number one barrier is physical access with 44% of respondents uh, alluding to that. So with that, we need to be able to make sure the infrastructure is in place, that they make that kind of capital investment to make sure the venue is accessible. Mm. We need to make sure then that the policies and procedures are in place as well. So we're not shortchanging disabled people or taking any facilities away. We're making sure that we're elevating those, especially when we look at it's happened at Champions League finals. We need to make sure the pinnacle, that's kind of there as well. And the governance of the game just owns it as well. So with UEFA, that they own that kind of situation about what we're trying to deliver to make the game more inclusive. But at club levels, the club governance also does it as well. It doesn't sit on one person's shoulder 
everyone needs to buy into and be committed into making the match day more inclusive. Should there be more financial support as well? Because you, you know, one of those, well, the highest was the cost of, of travel. And like you said, you explained all those extra mm. costs. Short term, could there be a sort of short term, if the facilities aren't there, that there should be some support for disabled and, viewers? Absolutely. If the okay. facilities aren't there, reasonable adjustments need to be made. So if we can have dedicated transport provisions, that needs to be in place. It needs to be fit and proper. And it needs mm. to make ensure that the number of wheelchair users who might travel, that you have low level buses to be able to transport people from the transport hubs to the games as well you know we've seen some real bad issues at the Champions League final in Istanbul where you know, wheelchair users and disabled fans have, have fallen and fractured their femur because they can't get to the kind of the points that they need to as well so there's some big issues that they kind of need to address as apart from that and that reasonable adjustment clubs and organizers need to ensure that that's in play if there are shortcomings just finally then as a result of this survey do you expect to see an improvement and when do you expect to see that improvement we our ambition as a part of this survey we want to engage with governing bodies and, and as a part of that this is fans talking about their experiences and it paints a bleak picture we expect that there should be changes off the back of that we have some guidance that's coming out around accessible stadiums that we can make the standards better as well locally in the uk and again in europe so we need to see those standards we we, we don't we can't put a time on when that change is going to happen but we need to kind of start that now that this doesn't continue going there's probably work going on in the background but we need to ensure that this work is at the front and centre. If we want to take this seriously, then serious actions need to be changed to make this as inclusive as possible. As we said, disability is the largest minority group in any population, 25% of the UK. It's a huge area that we need to address and make sure it's inclusive. Totally agree with that. Thank you so much for joining us Very today, welcome. Owen. Thank you.